My name is Jenny Hill. I'm a PhD student in environmental engineering in the School of Civil Engineering. Um, I'm co-supervised by Professors Jennifer Drake and Professor Brent Sleep. So today we're on the podium roof at City Hall. Um, it's a landmark project in terms of uh, reflecting the fact that Toronto has a bylaw mandating green roofs on all sorts of new developments and so I guess the City Council decided that they, they had to put their money where their mouth was and so we have this green roof which is actually um, accessible from Nathan Phillips Square. It's a city park and it's uh, part of the actual City Hall building. We're one story up at the moment. The reason that we're looking at Green Roof is because the bylaw was actually brought into place at the end of 2011, I believe. I'm just trying to remember the number off the top of my head. And uh, we feel that um, there was only a limited amount of research in North American roofs at the time at which the bylaw came into place. And therefore, there may be room to improve the specifications, to improve the stormwater management of green roofs that are built in the future throughout the city of Toronto. Because they, in a very urban setting like this, where there isn't a lot of land for other types of stormwater management, the rooftops actually are almost all we've got by way of tools to actually improve our stormwater management. So today we're taking um, a number of core samples. One of the aspects of the water management of the roof is the maximum water retention, and that's related to the porosity, so the overall air water spaces in between the granules. And it's also related to the size distribution of those pores in, in the gaps. So if you have a lot of very large pores, then the water will run very quickly and it will fall out and you won't have a lot of retention. But if you don't have a lot of pores, it won't hold a lot of water. So I'm taking core samples in order to look at the different sizes of pores and the different sizes of particles. We're also measuring infiltration rates. My name is Elisa LH. I'm a second year student of civil engineering at the University of Toronto. So today I'm helping my PhD supervisor Jenny Hill with uh, testing on green roofs. Uh, so my job is testing water infiltration rates. So basically we're using a homemade device that with water pressure uh, we're measuring how fast it infiltrates a certain amount of water so that in the end we can have a graph that measures the infiltration rate. <laughs> basically uh, first what we do is that we fill up this part of the device. We fill it up with water up to the first pipe level and then we add in water and then when we put in the cap it creates a head pressure on the water so that it'll keep the water leveled at that position so that when we attach the second one when we fill it up with water it will stay at a uh, intention and so once we place it on the soil it will infiltrate the water at a certain speed and then we get to re-record all of the data with the time and the depth and of based on the graduation on the tube. One of the reasons that we're actually focusing on the City Hall is that this podium was actually constructed by Flynn Canada and they are my industrial sponsors so their seed money funds my research and um, they have a lot of interest in how it's developing and growing over time. And so just whilst we were visiting on site today, I'm making some observations to share with them um, in terms of a site visit. They have discussed the various maintenance issues that are associated with um, designs that look great on paper and then over time uh, are interesting, unique, different or difficult in a way that was not anticipated to maintain and keep looking fresh, which of course at City Hall is incredibly important. Um, one of the things is the gravel pathways, which are that we, there is seeding actually coming in from the beds, it seeds, and also that can be viewed over in the top northeast corner of the roof, where the actual pavers have a lot of vegetation growing from between them, so it's, it becomes quite a large maintenance issue and the same can be seen in many green roofs um, that have a very strong um, design element so if, if you want very crisp clean lines uh, it creates uh, construction management issues and we're also looking at the um, diversity of the vegetation so uh, there are some places where the vegetation is thriving and is very dense and there are other places where it's not so much. Um, 
working in collaboration with the landscape architecture department at the U of T. We're looking at uh, the sort of vegetation density and diversity and what's happening to the substrate, the soilless media. Um, in terms of its relationship to the plants. So whether it's eroding or whether it's actually building up over time. And this will be research that takes place over a number of weeks, number of months, and ultimately over a number of years as well to actually look at that relationship between the water, the plants and the soil. There's two really, really delightful aspects to my research work. And one is that I get to be out of doors and like in the sunshine and the rain and the weather. And I love that. It, it's really a big improvement on doing a lot of laboratory work for me. Um, another aspect of this work is how incredibly interdisciplinary uh, the whole field is. And so um, we work in my research group. Um, that's not with my supervisor, but uh, I'm part of a larger research group, which is based out of the GRIT laboratory, which is, stands for Green Roof Innovations Testing. And so I do work with landscape architects, with planners, with ecologists. I meet botanists, I meet artists and designers. I meet agricultural engineers, civil engineers, hydrological engineers. So that's a really exciting part of this particular research that I'm really delighted to have been part of that.